Hello and welcome everybody. It is Thursday night, so it is once again time for the Tank Show, where we hopefully spend some time acquiring new knowledge, top off that tank if you will. It's great to see all of you all here hanging out. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to cover different types of filtration, some pros and cons with each one of them. And before that, we're going to talk a little bit about what filtration does and the three major components to filtration. As always, I've got my buddy, pal, and co-host Chattanooga Ed here with me tonight. Ed, thank you as always for being here. It's awesome to be here. So I figure it's been a while since we did a, um, a subject-oriented Thursday night, so might as well jump back on that. Um, but to start out with, uh, in terms of filtration, and most of you all will know this, but you know, maybe you're new, maybe you don't. Uh, there are three types of filtration that you're looking at. You've got your mechanical, your biological, and then your chemical. Uh, most of what I focus on is going to be your mechanical um, and your biological. I don't so much mess with the chemical, but we'll still talk about that a little bit. Uh, so your mechanical is, of course, going to be anything um, that's physically pushing or pulling water. It's designed to pull out particles and debris and waste and that type of stuff. Your biological, it applies to your filtration method, but it's also very much a part of your tank, your ecosystem. If you set up a tank properly, cycle it, uh, grow that beneficial bacteria in the tank. You should have biological filtration going on inside your actual tank via that beneficial bacteria. Um, but it is nice to have a good filtration source that can house some back to, uh, beneficial bacteria as well. And then your chemical is going to be, typically speaking, uh, using carbon. That's the most common. Um, and what that does is that actually absorbs toxins and things out of the water. So I honestly don't use carbon a whole lot. Uh, I it's one of those things when I first started fish keeping, it was like, well, you have to have carbon. Uh, and then as I you know, grew in the hobby and I researched, I learned exactly how things worked, what they did and why we used them. Um, I kind of pulled away from activated carbon just because I don't really have a need for it between my mechanical filtration and my biological filtration. Uh, it is good for pulling medicines and things out of the water uh, after you've had to dose some fish, things of that nature. Uh, I do keep some on hand just in case I need it in an emergency. Uh, that's about the only times I ever use it. What about you, Ed? Do you use much carbon nowadays, much chemical filtration? You know, I love carbon. I don't use it much anymore. Uh, 70s and 80s, that was the go-to. You know, carbon and polyfiber, you know, to some type of uh, cotton yeah. to catch everything in box filters. That was the main deal back then. Um but I do use it for one filter I'm going to be showing tonight. Uh, I absolutely love it. But the bad thing about it that I don't like is it's going to pull my liquid fertilizers out. Yes. And you uh, see, I love using Easy Green. Easy Green, I think, is the best fertilizer I've found out there. I've tried a lot of different fertilizers. Easy Green seems to be the best. But if I've got carbon in there, charcoal, whatever, it's going to pull it out of the water column and I want my plants to do that. So my plants are kind of taking over for the carbon. Gotcha. Yeah. That, and I've, uh, that is a big part of why I've stayed away from it after I switched away from it. I saw a hashtag bugs coming in here. That's gotta be from KG tropicals. Thank you so much, John and Lisa for the send over. Glad to have Lisa back on the show this week. The show looked a lot better now that it's not just John. I gotta give him a hard time. Uh, but seriously, thank you for the send over and thank you all for coming over. Um, so I guess we'll start out with um, what used to be my primary source of filtration for the longest time. And that is the green screens are not going to light me tonight. But that is your hang on back filters. So we're going to pull this out. We're going to take a look at it. Look at the various components. Uh, we'll talk about some pros and cons. And I'm curious to see what you all have to say. Uh, Amanda Baker says, will Puregen remove fertilizer? That's a good question. I honestly do not know because I'm not, um, I don't say not a Purigen fan. Uh, I just, I have not used Purigen, um, but I'm pretty sure that there are a couple people in the chat that will have a good reliable answer for that. All right, let me put our thing over there. Oh, yay. Here we go. Let's get all the parts out. I've got a brand new filter for this tonight. It's a lot easier than pulling one of the big ones off of the tank and pouring water all over the computer, right? Well, I thought about bringing one up, but it's like, you know what? I bet he's going to have one. Yeah, I've got, uh, and I've got a couple of sponge filters as well. And you and I talked about some some other things. So the key components, of course, there you've got your, your intake. Figure out how to put that on. 
There we go. So we've got, of course, our intake. Yep, green screen's going to get real fussy tonight. Intake, pulling everything up in there. And then, as with most hang on back filters, it's got this little thing right here. There we go. It'll show it that way. This little filter cartridge. That way you can spend money on these. You know, and this has actually got some activated carbon. I think y'all can probably hear that inside of there. And then it's got that pad on there for your mechanical filtration. And then this one has got this little thing, which is my new hairbrush. Now, this is for your biological filtration right there. So that is designed to allow, let's set that down. It's designed to allow lots of space for beneficial bacteria to grow in the water within your filter there. So your mechanical comes through, it clears out the, the debris, the detritus. It hits that chemical filtration with the activated carbon. And then it hits that little pad there for your biological. So what I recommend, um, and oftentimes this is referred to as hot rotting, but what I recommend is you take this, this little thing and you even take this little thing and you throw them away. That's my first recommendation. I save it for if I have meds in there and I need to pull yeah. meds because it so, is so chart. It is. Technically, I will use them once. The first time, if I get a new filter, I will run it through. I will wait until it's time to change that and then I will throw it out and I will not buy another one. I also um, will use it if there's like, a, you know, it's a brand new tank and I've got a lot of silt floating around. Yeah, absolutely. They do have their uses, but um, I'm actually, I've come up with a method for, um, well, so here, don't throw this out. Let me change that. That plastic part, that comes in handy for a, a DIY that you can do, um, save you a lot of money, and it works really well. We'll, sh we'll show you that one of these days. Um, I, I need to tell somebody something. Shh, go for Steve it. Evo, don't get ahead of us. Okay. <laughs> I haven't even looked at it. I he's, hadn't even looked at it. He's giving away what we're doing next. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. I'm going to pause the chat up there so that I can actually get to these things. And I see a couple of super chats. Thank you so much, guys. We will get to those. Very much appreciated. Um, and I promise we will address all the highlighted comments and super chats shortly. All right. So what you can do is... In place of, okay, so your water is coming up through there. Hit your mechanical, which also has your chemical inside of there with that activated carbon. And then it hits your biological there. You can take both of these out. Instead of having to replace this every two weeks, every month, it depends upon your load. Gives you plenty of room in here to go and purchase. I know you're like, oh, I've got to spend money. Well, this is going to be a lot cheaper than having to buy these things every That's couple of yeah. weeks. Get you some sponge, get you aquarium filter sponge, cut it to size, put it down in there. That is going to do your mechanical filtration and your biological filtration. Um, there are ways you could do it. So, I mean, like, technically, if you wanted to, you could take, um, oh, well, words have, have eluded me here. Uh, I mean, you could do pantyhose, but I like to use these little mesh bags, um, but you could take a little mesh bag and you could put some carbon in there. Um, but, again, I don't run carbon a lot, so I don't do that. Um, but if I needed to and I wanted to pull something out, I could take a little bag of carbon, stick it in there, and you could have your mechanical, biological, and your chemical filtration. Now, I'm going to put this stuff back in here so I don't lose it. So I feel like these are... Not necessarily now, for the good, but these are the most common beginner. Let's put that in there. But that's how often I use them. I stuck the thing in there backwards. The most common beginner filters. Not necessarily because it's the best method, but because you see them. I mean, they come with a lot of setups. It's kind of the easy thing. People look at They go, okay, I can plug this in the wall. I can hang it on the back. I don't have to get in the tank to maintain it. I just buy this little pad every couple of weeks. I throw that one out. I put a new one in. It's it's low maintenance in that aspect. Go ahead. Sorry, you were trying to say something. I'm so sorry I ran off on you like that. I forgot to bring That's this fine. with me. And you were right at the spot where you were talking about how you put the sponge in there. Yeah. What if you put some lava rock and... Oh, I almost poked myself in the eye with this runner it has. But uh, this type... I don't remember what this plan is called. But it can go with the truth solid in the water. So you could... Could you put this pot or this plant 
in there with just rocks around it and then it would just flow all the stuff from the tank and it'll just slowly eat the stuff. Plus you'll have beneficial bacteria in all those rocks. Absolutely. So that is going to cover your beneficial bacteria. And that's actually going to cover the final stage of filtration, which is, you know, you getting in there and doing water changes to pull out the nitrates because you have ammonia that turns into nitrite, which turns into nitrate. Um, so it's, it's your plants will help pull down your nitrate levels. Uh, I have found in doing those types of filters, you don't nearly get the efficiency in terms of your mechanical filtration. Um, you can you can finagle it and you can make it work, um, but nothing is quite as efficient as that water having to go through that solid surface of either sponge or a fil filter cartridge even um, to where there's no way it can go around. It's, it's being forced through some sort of membrane, some sort of porous material. Um, and it has to go through it, and therefore the debris and detritus has to get stuck on whatever that membrane is that you're using. Um, but that is an awesome method. I like that a lot for the biological and also for the helping remove nitrates, uh, which we're going to talk more about plants and what they do for filtration here in a little bit. Rustic Nashville said that's a corn plant. I'm thinking oh. my, my local fish store calls it a monkey pole or something, because it, it gets a real long stick on it. I don't know. No. But it could just be that, and that's awesome. Absolutely. So one more thing I want to talk about in terms of what you can do to utilize your hang-on back better, and I'm sure people have mentioned this in the chat. And I love the fact that this little aqua top, uh, there we go, aqua top. This is why I don't use the green screen when I shoot uh, unboxing videos. But it actually comes with a little pre-filter sponge, which is the next thing. So you've got your intake for whatever kind of filtration you've got, and this pre-filter sponge, it works on various methods of filtration. Um, but especially if you've got a hang on back, get your little pre-filter sponge there, put it on there. That's going to give you additional mechanical filtration. It's going to give you a little bit additional biological filtration, but it's also going to help keep little baby fishes and shrimps and things like that from getting sucked up into your filter, which was initially why I started using them. All right, before we jump, well, I guess I should say some of the pros and cons here. So, the pros to the box filter, uh, it is convenient. Uh, it's it's very user friendly for the beginner. You don't really have to know much of anything to be able to utilize a hang on back efficiently. Um, you can in this, you could just leave it the way it comes, change your filter cartridges out. You're good to go. That's all you have to mess with. Very simple to use. Uh, as you get into multiple aquariums, you catch that um, multi tank syndrome. You get you a little fish room fever going on there. And you've got lots of aquariums. The biggest downside, biggest downside is this guy right here, that little fella. You've got 100 aquariums, and you've got to find places to plug in 100 of these things, various sizes. That can be not only intensive on your breaker box, but also on your power bill. Um, that's one of the big downsides, downsides to hang on backs, in my opinion. Um, and just, they don't, some are better than others in terms of customization. The aqua top is pretty nice. This is a small filter, so it doesn't have a ton of space to begin with, but I feel like the space that is given, um, lends itself well to being hot rotted. The, uh, what I can never remember the name of them. The titles, uh, the, 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 the titles are great. Um, uh, my favorite though is somebody's going to know it in the chat. Um, whisper aqua, aqua clear. The Aqua Clear, those are my favorite because they have the whole back of it. You could just rip the stuff out and do whatever you want. It's a big empty space, um, but they're also designed to have a big sponge pad in them, uh, or at least the, the older ones like I've got. I haven't had to buy one in years, haven't had a newer one, but they come with a big sponge pad and they've got some different layers. And I like the way that they're designed. Uh, but again, you know, you're getting into, even if it's just in one room, you've got a dozen tanks that all have hang on backs. You've got to plug in a dozen hang on backs on top of whatever, you know, lights or heaters or anything else that you've got going on. Plus stuff you might have in the room that, you know, got all sorts of monitors and computers and stuff in here. I need to plug that stuff in. So it has definitely been uh, nice not having to worry about outlets in terms of filtering my aquarium. You have anything you want to add for hang on back filters before we move on, Ed? Uh, no, I 
when they first hit the market, I think the Whisper was the first one that ever really came out big. And I remember how amazingly awesome it was. You know, it was yep. like a whole new thing. Yep. And I mean, I remember when underground filters that, you know, under the gravel fi filters came out and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's buy one of those. They're so cool. And he was like, no, it's a waste of money. But uh, doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the hang off the backs were they came around, I think, when I was like in high school or junior high. So I had a little spending money and I was able to buy one of those. And it was amazing. But it seems like today they just break so much quicker. They don't, you know, they have the aqua or the bio wheels. Yeah. And the bio wheel is a neat gimmick, but I yeah. think it just breaks quicker. You know, it stops spinning. And sometimes you'll get huh. one that'll spin for two years, but it seems like. You know, that's the one thing I really hate about hang off the backs is they just don't seem to last like they used to. They really don't, uh, which, you know, it's it's life, so to speak. So everything has has gotten cheaper in terms of production. But the hang on backs, I think it really does show. Um, and honestly, I haven't had one of the newer hang on backs with the bio wheels on it. I know 15 years ago, uh, the Marine lands with the bio wheels on them those things ran forever for me. I mean, like they ran until I stopped using them and I've still got one. I plugged in. It's been about a year or so ago, but I needed it just, you know, in a pinch, I plugged it in, I threw the bio wheels on it and it still, it, it ran like a dream, but it was an older one. Um, so I'm going to jump in the chat real quick. Let me pause that and get my screen back. We're going to catch up in the chat a little bit, move that down there and then we'll jump into the next method of filtration and we'll kind of breeze through these things uh, so we can get everything in in our one hour allotment and talk to the chat a little bit. Crypt Keeper Aquatics saying hey to everybody. Good to see you Crypt Keeper. Um, I thought that was cool. You mentioned that uh, Apple had done some sort of a update for picture in picture viewing so that you could multitask easier. So awesome. Glad to hear that. Mish Tank Barn with $5 super chat. Thanks so much. Appreciate you buddy. Says Pip Jar. Appreciate you putting that five bucks in the tip drum, friend. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Burlow's Aquatics with $5 Super Chat says, Good evening, gents. Good seeing y'all. It's good to see you, buddy. I hope you've been doing well. I hope things are going well at the house. And thank you so much for the support. Uh, it always does mean a lot to me. Never expect it, but always very much appreciate it. Uh, the mods are doing awesome mod things. We'll skip those highlights there. Matthew, good to see you again, says, uh, made it on a stream again. I love using my aquarium co-op fertilizers and products. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a product we're going to talk about here in just a second. I do enjoy the co-op stuff. It is handy. It's very handy. Uh, rolling through here. Do, do, do. All right. Hip hop hillbilly. How's it going? Um, saying fish room fever in chat. I'm using a Hyger 24 seven light root tabs and dosing easy green twice a week. Um, but my hornswort, I think that was going to be hornswort and the spell check went Harry Potter and turned it into Hogwart. <laughs> yeah. uh, frog, frog bit and Ludwigia all seem to still be going downhill. Any advice? Um, so you've got tabs, you're dosing twice a week. The first thing I might do now, I don't know if you're testing your levels. Um, if you're testing your levels and it calls for it on the easy green, they keep dosing twice a week. But the first thing I might do is just dose once a week. Um, sometimes we can do more harm than good by over fertilizing, uh, by putting too much in the water. Uh, but depending upon your light cycle, I mean, that's a good light. The Hyger 24 seven is a good light. I, I did an unboxing a little while back on a, a Hyger light and I like them. I've got another one though. This. I'm going to finish filming the rest of the unboxing for hopefully tomorrow. I tried to film earlier and the power went out. We had some nice thunderstorms. Um, got a good light. I mean, you're doing your fertilizers. Those guys in particular. Um, sometimes. So I guess there are a couple things to look at. One is uh, they might need a little bit of time to die up and come back. They may just be adjusting to your water and being in the water and parameters and things. Sometimes you get some die off and plants, you know, do really bad before they do really good. That happens a lot. Uh, so I would give them some time. Maybe, and again, I don't know your light cycle, but maybe give them a little bit more light. Um, at, at an hour, 
maybe. Um, it's, it's hard to tell without knowing how long you're doing the lights, which you'll probably tell me, and I'll find later on in the chat. Uh, but th that's my thing would be probably a little bit more light. Um, if you're testing and you find that they're just eating that stuff up <laughs> and you're not seeing, like you're seeing no nitrates whatsoever, you could try dosing a third time a week, uh, but I would not do that unless you're testing and you're seeing that the plants are just soaking the stuff up. I have seen it happen before, um, but it's not very often. Normally when it's like, hey, I got new plants. Oh, they're not doing well. It's the adjustment period. More often times than not. Go ahead, buddy. I know you, I see you've got something to say there. Well, um, I've, I've never had good luck with hornworm, you know, and I, but like maybe Rico, I know Rico and I, we've talked about it many times, but plants work for him are terrible here, but they, I think a lot is the water chemistry, which sounds weird, yes. but I, and I actually think it might be from factory or water factory or water treatment facility from water treatment facility. Definitely. But I would try what the first plants I bought, almost all of them died, except for the the one that I thought would have the hardest time would be the Madagascar lakes. I thought that would be the hardest thing to grow, and it was the super easiest. But um, what I would do is I would buy my my plants from the local fish store, and hopefully it's really close to you, and see how they do in your tank. And then once you get a line of plants that you know is going to work, like let's say Val. Val works great for me. I have probably five or six different types of Val, and I know I can grow it like a madman. So I always... When I need a plant, I know I can always go to Val and be good. Yeah. I know Anubius. Anubius does great for me. People say it's a slow grower, but I have like giant things of Anubius. So uh, it's just, it's it's all about luck, I think. And I, I, I bet you if I put hornwort in my tank right now, it would die. Crips, they die in my water for some reason. I have a hard time with them. So it's just, sometimes it's just finding the right recipe for where you live. Absolutely. I don't know if that helps or not. No, that, that is very good information. Uh, it does definitely help to try and find some plants locally if you can. Um, typically, uh, you know, hobbyists near you, if they're doing well with something, a lot of times you have the same water source. Now, that can be totally off. Yeah, you know, I can go down to my local fish store, Aquatic Marine. They're on a different water source than I am, and they're three minutes away. Um, they are just up the street, and they're on a different water source. And the other side of Knoxville is on a different water source. If you go to the west end of it, so it, it, it can be frustrating depending upon the size of your city trying to find, you know, plants that are actually in your water source, your water supply um, that, you know, work well for that. But no, that's a, a great point, Ed. And I've had that happen as well. I get something, it's from somebody else's water that's harder or softer, and it just doesn't take to my water well. So I hope that helps you out. Um, and I appreciate you being here, Hip Hop Hillbilly. As always, it's good to see you. Uh, MC Aquatic says, have you ever put an air stone and a hang on back? Yes, I have. Um, I don't like it. I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, I just, I don't, I, I don't care for it. I, now, and like the big Aqua Clear 110, you know, that's this big and that wide. Yeah, it's got a lot of surface area to agitate. Uh, and I know the water's constantly flowing and the surface is constantly changing. But I just, I don't care for it. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a great, great idea. Um, and I have done it before to try and pretty things up. I just really prefer my air stones in the tank. Um, and my filtration method uh, has to do with my airline running into the tank, not into the filter. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. I did see a bunch of people talking about polyfill. So I guess we should touch on polyfill. Yeah, I don't know. Were we going to talk about polyfill tonight, Ed? I don't know if yes. I... I asked James to pull out the polyfill for my secret weapon filter. So right. we'll talk, people talk about. about his secret weapon filter in a minute. Um, but polyfill, it can be utilized in most, just about all uh, filtration methods. And it is great stuff. It's really, really nice for pulling out the really fine particulate and polishing the water. That's my favorite thing to use it for is water polishing. Um, which I didn't grab one of my DIY water polishers, but I mean, you can, you can rig it to most things and you can even, it comes in either this free form here, which is kind of loose batting, or you can get the sheets of it. And if you get the sheets of it, you can even hot rod a sponge filter with it. Cause you can then wrap it around it, a little rubber band or a string or something. 
and you can do some polishing that way. Um, I, it, I like the sheets. I, I do like the sheets as well. I ha My sheet is out of the package, so I grabbed this instead, the loose fiber. Um, but I like that for like box filters and things, and we'll talk more about that here shortly. And we got to throw out the disclaimer. Make Go sure it. it doesn't say mold free. Yes, you don't want any type of mildew or mold resistant because um, they do have it and you don't want it because that's got chemicals and those are not good. Yep. It'll kill your beneficial bacteria and other stuff that's in your tank. All right. You let's see. Well, I am. Um, let's talk about my secret weapon. And let's talk about your secret weapon. I'm going to pause the chat right there. We will get back to you. I promise. I saw okay. some more super chats come in. I oh, appreciate yeah. you guys and I love you. We'll get to those shortly. Okay. This is a water polisher. It's a, the, a whisper, no, a, a Murrayland uh, polisher. You can see the Marineland. I think it is the best product that Marineland makes. Probably. I've used their uh, lights in their. I've got one of their uh, canister filters, and it's not a bad. I thought it, I want it, and uh, I was like, oh boy, I want a stupid <laughs> canister filter. But it actually ran really good, and it still is. But uh, this thing was recommended from uh, Sean Peck when it first came out. And uh, I absolutely love this thing. I don't use it all the time. I use it when I bring my uh, guppies in from tubbing at the end of the year. If the water's green, it will pull that stuff out. It will make your water crystal clear. Like if you've got an algae bloom, you hook up one of these and you just keep changing the polyfill out of it you'll pull that right out. It's crazy. Yep. And it goes, it's completely submersible. So it goes completely underwater. I used this thing. I used, uh, oh, what was, uh, playground sand in my 200 gallon tank. Lots. And, and the problem with playground sand isn't the sand, you know, it's great and cheap, but it's, it's mixed with, uh, clay. So it sticks for kids when they make castles makes sense that's why they put the clay in there but in a fish tank clay just makes a cloud i use this it pulled all the clay out of the water i mean it just they it's amazing awesome. and uh it's like twist that whole thing goes under but they give you a couple different little filters here now this one is the one i prefer and what i do is i wrap the polyfill around it mm -hmm. but it gives you two chambers, and I always keep a little piece of foam in there for, you know, to catch whatever goes through, or if I keep it in there long enough, maybe by, uh, beneficial bacteria. But I can load this. I've loaded these up several times with carbon, so it's going to pull stuff out of the water. I, I just, and it has two little chambers, so you could, like, put two different things in there. I, I can't say enough. Yeah, I think it... And I got this on sale at PetSmart for, I think, $39, and they're normally like $70. They are expensive, but they they work really, really well. Yeah, now, and I mean, a lot of space in there, so oh, the yeah. polyfill goes in there. And they do give you, like, even a water, like a water softener, or, you know, like the type of thing that you'd have a filter for a, a RO system, you know, that yeah. paper yeah. type folded they gave mm -hmm. me one or two of those filters with this. Nice. I've never used it because I've always used this thing. But uh, like if there was a disaster, maybe I'd use that. You know, it's like it's kind of like those stupid hang off the back things that you never want to use because I don't ever want to buy more. But I say this water polisher, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, definitely. It, and it and we've. Safe. A lot of We've talked about you can do a hot rod version with just a power head, which is essentially what the top of that yeah. looks like. Uh, just take a power head and then not this style of water bottle because it's got a small top, but a water bottle, cut the bottom off. I usually put a little piece of sponge in there just to keep the polyfill from getting pulled into the, the impeller. And then I just shove polyfill in the bottom of it. And I, that's my DIY polisher. I, I yank the water bottle and the polyfill off when I'm done with it, throw it away and put it up. You, should I talk about this since we're it's kind of the same? We aren't well, there yet, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll skip it. We can skip to internal filters. Go right ahead. So next method we're talking about internal power filters. Yeah, but it's also a I. It's also like a polisher mm -hmm. in many ways because it's just the power head on top, and it's just a container at the bottom. 
So now what makes these sharks really cool is you can adjust the flow rate at the bottom, how much you want in there, but it's all magnets. If I can figure out how to do this. That is you awesome. Know? And I mean, just little thing after little sponge, but I could put little content. If I was actually running this, I would probably put a bunch of little bio balls in there to do it. But uh, no, it, it's still got some custom bit, custom bit. You know what I'm trying to say. You can still do some customization to it. Yeah, it's and it's all magnets, which is really neat. Yeah, that uh, is nice. John from KG Tropics, he he sells these things. Yeah, keepfishkeeping.com. And I mean, look at this. This it's just all now this one has a magnet, but it also holds down. Yeah, but, one of the great one of the great things about those, um, which is actually brings up a downside that I forgot to mention on these. That thing's in the water. So if you lose power, which the lights flickered because there was a big lightning strike. Um, so hopefully I don't lose power. But if you lose power, you don't have to reprime that thing. Power comes on, it's already in the water. You know, it, it starts going again. Um, there are some self-priming hang-on backs, but a lot of them are not, which means if you have a power outage um, or you unplug it, you have to reprime it. You have to get water back into it so the impeller is not running dry. I had to do that earlier when the power went out. Not fun. Yeah, I, I love these things. Well, I say I do. I've never actually even used it. I, I love this one so much, I'm afraid to mess it up. I put it He in loves to show it off. I have I noticed do. that. So... Uh, that's what it is. I bought it as a display, but I'd like to buy the other sizes and actually try them out sometime. Absolutely. Definitely. But we can get uh, back to this for your in underwater. Oh, you're, you're good. So, uh, I mean, I was going to ask you some of the, the pros and cons to that type of filtration. We talked about, you know, it being a pro that it's already in the water. Um, it does have some customization option to it. Um, cons, it's uh, electric. Yeah. Yeah, and it's limited space on the inside. The polisher, yeah, it, it's, you know, the Marineland polisher has probably three times the space. Yeah, but they are a great filter. They work really well. Oh, yeah. Um, I will get to you guys and give you a formal thank you. But Rico Stan, Stephen P. Two thousand three, Rustic Nashville, Paul Terra, Rustic Nashville again. Rico Stan again, and Fish Tank Dad. Appreciate all the love and super chats from you guys. I give you a, a formal thanks here shortly as we scroll down to it. I'm going to get rolling. We've only got 27 minutes left. I've still got a couple things to talk about and um, really hoping the power doesn't go out again. Uh, so moving on to my favorite type of filtration, probably if I had to pick favorite, it's going to be your sponge filters. So we've got two different types here. We've got the, of course, everybody knows from the green, the aquarium co-op sponge filter. That green just disappears into the green screen. I love it. I'm going to have to, there we go. So there's a pro. If you're using the co-op stuff and you have a green screen and you want that to disappear, you just, you know. Yeah. No. Um, so co-op ones, they are a lot more porous. There's a much bigger, let's see how close we can get that, do a comparison on the porosity here. Much bigger hole there. And now I'm just going to disappear with everything. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. We're not going to do it. There. So you can see, boy, that green. It's not working out. The big difference in the porosity. These, a lot less maintenance. You don't have to clean them nearly as much. They don't really clog, so to speak. I um, love that. I do. I love it. I love the green. Um, I, I feel too. like you really don't see the algae and stuff nearly as much on the green. Um, but in terms of sponge filters, how they work and why they're the greatest thing ever, um, no bias there, of course. So you get your beneficial bacteria your biological filtration has got all these pores to live in it's got all the surface area inside of here so you've got lots of room for biological filtration these also do a really great job let's see if this wants to a really great job on your mechanical filtration um, there's not a great way to add carbon to this thing i'm sure you could do it um, but there's not a really great way to add a chemical set up if you wanted to so if that's something you're like i have to have chemical filtration probably not the thing for you uh, another downside is once again like that internal filter they're in the tank you know they are taking up room you have to find some place to put this that's aesthetically pleasing that you don't mind looking at it um but i feel like they are without a doubt i feel like the sponge should be the beginner's 
aquarium filter instead of the hang on back. I really, really do. Yes, you have to get into the tank, so that might be another downside. But they do such an amazing job, and they have so much surface area for beneficial bacteria. They do a fantastic job at mechanical filtration. Uh, you don't have to plug it in. That's one of the biggest reasons I switched over to these. You have to run air to it, but you don't need to plug in each individual one if you've got a big air pump all the way up to a linear piston pump like I have and like Ed has. Like a lot of people have the, the big air pumps. So I can take 50 of these, run airlines to them, run one electrical plug into the wall. It's not taking up all of <laughs> I see you there, Whip. It's not taking up all of those outlets. It's not consuming all of that electricity, which is great for the environment, but also is great for my pocket and not having to spend all the super chats that these awesome people are throwing on the electric bill. Um, and it's just, I find it to be much more convenient. I enjoy the, there's the lightning again, the thunder. Um, I enjoy the maintenance aspect of these. Yeah, you have to get them out of the water and you know, you don't want to slosh all the goop out of them as you're getting them out of the water. I feel like I don't have to do nearly as much maintenance and that I can trust these just from my experience uh, a lot more than I do my hang on back filters. Once again, if the power goes out, as soon as it comes back on, these things are running again. On that note, um, you know, if we have a bad power outage, all I need to do is plug one cord into uh, my power inverter or if you've got a small generator or something like that, a backup power supply. It's just one cord. I plug it in. I'm still filtering and aerating all of my tanks. It's just simple. I love them. Go ahead, Ed. I know you've got something to say about sponges. I like them. <laughs> They're no, really, swell. Yeah, everything you said is right on. You know, uh, I was just showing this is for 125 gallon tanks. Sponge yeah. Filter. yeah. I, I use these for my uh, my tub tubbing. Now, not I don't use them outdoors, but I do inside. So if you look at any of my indoor tubs, I have these giant monsters in there because awesome. it's a 110-gallon tub. I want some oxygen going to it. I don't have substrate in there, you know, so there's less beneficial bacteria stuff that it can hang on to. So I'd love Definitely. these for that. Absolutely. And, and that's another thing. So like, like you were talking about what that's rated to. This is your typical you know, 40 gallon sponge that I was just showing you. This is recommended for what? Uh, okay. No, 80 gallons per hour, 15 to 20. So this is rated up to a 25 gallon tank. So this will do 40 gallon tank. And this thing does up to a 25 gallon tank. Um, you can get away with a lot less sponge than it seems like you can hang on back filtration. Uh, so that's just something else I've noticed. And the electric is a lot less too. It is. It is a lot less. I saw um, a significant, uh, well over hundred dollar drop in my electric bill just as I was changing away from all hang on backs, moving over to sponges and putting them all on one big air pump, one big honk and air pump. That thing has paid for itself in electric oh. savings multiple times over. And they're quiet, so you're. I mean, all those. You never know when one of those uh, hang off the backs are going to start making noise. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to worry about replacing impellers and seals and all that type of stuff, which uh, that's another plus for that shark as well, is you don't have to worry about the seal so much because it's magnetic, plus it's internal. Um, so, you know, lots of different benefits. <laughs> I don't have one to show you because I didn't want to pull it out of the tank, but box filters kind of fall in line with your sponges. And box filters are great for anybody that doesn't know. It's basically just a plastic box, and it's got different levels of media in there, and it's air-driven. So, again, you're running an airline to it. Um, I've actually, I've got a video. That's one of the most liked videos I've got um, where I made a box filter out of a fish food container. Um, and that was, that was fun. And it was reusing the container and it works, it works really, really well. Uh, and that particular one, I use it for polishing. So instead of having a sponge layer in there, I have polyfill in there. So it does some really fine water polishing, but it's also got uh, some rock in there, some lava rock and some gravel uh, to give a good area for biological filtration. Thank you so much, little bit. I see you and we'll get to you formally here in just a second, but I appreciate you. Um, so box filters are awesome. They're very old school. Uh, box filters have been around for forever, but I still, uh, I think they're an awesome little filter. If you've never tried one, um, get you one. They're cheap. Try it out. They're, they're a fun little thing to, to try out for the first time. If you're uh, yeah, ever so slightly handy, 
build yourself one. You could go look at somebody else's video, or you could check out my DIY box filter and use one of those fish food containers you've got lying around the house. Because I know you've got fish food containers that go in the trash all the time. Moving on from there and speeding up because we've got 19 minutes. I still have thank yous to say, questions to answer, and filtration methods to cover. Canister filters. So, big old canister filter. First thing I go to with that, um, I guess we'll say it covers your mechanical, it covers your biological, and it typically covers your chemical as well. You've usually got multiple chambers inside of there. You end up having two tubes that go in your tank, one intake, one output. Um, it gets pulled in through there, goes through your mechanical filtration, hits your chemical filtration, hits your biological area. One of the, well, a couple of the great things about canister filters is you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get a lot of power. You get something that uh, typically has a really high flow rate for what you're having to introduce to the tank. And you get a lot of space for different media and you can, you know, do what you want in there. In a lot of cases, you can swap things out, add more layers of sponges, you know, take out the charcoal, add more charcoal if you need to really pull some stuff out of the water. So it's got a lot of space for a lot of customization, um, depending upon the make of it. They are really nice because you don't really have much going into the tank. I think that's why you see a lot of aquascapers will use a canister uh, because you can actually buy some really nice glass um, intake and out tubes. Uh, so you instead of having a whole bunch of plastic hanging on your tank or in your tank or sponge in there, you know, you can take that out and then you've got just these really nice pieces of glass that are sucking the water out and putting the water back in. So I think that's one of the many reasons why you see a lot of people with really nice aquascape tanks. They go that method because you get a really classy look from that. Um, except they've got a lot of power to them. They can do a lot. There's good customization with them. My biggest pet peeve um, is that they're almost too easy. It is, I don't know how many people I've talked to over the years that we almost kind of set it and forget it. We hook up the canister, that thing gets going, and then eight months later, it's like, oh, shoot, I haven't changed the media in that canister since I set it up. I've done it, too. I have done it, too. I am so guilty of that, and I know a lot of canister people are. Um, I stopped being quite as bad about it when I was using uh, canisters on the saltwater side because a little bit pickier setup there. Uh, but I feel like that's one of the major downfalls two canisters is the fact that it's almost so simple that a lot of times you don't have that maintenance right in your face. So you don't even think about doing it. Uh, the second big issue I have with canisters um, is that the way they're designed, you create a vacuum in a sense that the water is getting sucked through and spat out of. And so you have a seal. It has to be a sealed compartment. There's nothing like coming into a flood because the seal has blown on your canister. So it has sucked all the water out of your tank down to however low you've got that. And usually those things go pretty deep, pretty deep. Yeah. So you get, you know, this much water that one, depending upon the size of the tank and it is just blown out everywhere. Um, I honestly don't, I've had the seals blow enough, even with, you know, when I do take them apart, properly cleaning, trying to replace them. If I even think there's anything wrong, uh, I still don't trust a canister to the point that I will put it in a five gallon bucket. Um, and now I have water sensors. So I'll put a water sensor there just in case um, because I've had enough seals over, you know, years and years blow out on me that I just, I don't trust them anymore. Uh, so that would be my, my biggest, probably if I had to pick my biggest con is the potential for catastrophic water damage. If your seal goes out. Now, do you put Vaseline or anything on your seals? Uh, yes, you can put Vaseline on the seals. Um, there are a couple other things you can do with them. Um, some different um, oils and stuff that are organic and they won't cause any harm. But even with doing that, I've had seals that looked perfectly fine. They still had their elasticity. And, you know, once or twice, it's even been an issue where I didn't get the seal completely seated in there properly. And I had to yeah. take it back apart and start all over again, you know. So they're, they're great. They've got a lot of power to them. Uh, you do have good customization. They're kind of hidden away, but that also plays to the con of the fact that they're so well hidden away that oftentimes people don't maintenance them. And when you do the maintenance required on it, a lot of times it is messy. It's a hassle. You've got to reprime the hoses a lot of times. Sometimes they don't want to reprime properly. You get air bubbles stuck in there. Uh, just getting all the compartments back in and getting the water in it and sealed up and all that can be a pain in the backside. 
Uh, so I use them. I've got a brand new one back here that I wanted one of the raffles um, that's going to be going on one of the 25 gallon cubes. Technically, it's going to be going on both of them because we're building a uh, water bridge between the two. But shh, don't tell anybody. That's a surprise. Uh, but it is definitely not one of my preferred methods of filtration. Thought said. Anything else before we fly through the last one, two, um, couple things? I had my first one I ever had was a Magnum, and they were awesome. They, I miss them so much. You them because they were clear plastic. I wish to God I still had it. If I would have known that I was going to be on YouTube, I would have saved it, even though I didn't. Um, the, the Magnum 350, I think, was the yep. greatest canister ever created. And those old school people in the chat are probably going, yep. They did have some seal issues from time to time, but that was mostly on the Magnum Hot, which was a hang-on tank canister, which was an interesting concept, but seals it, were horrible. Well, it wasn't... Uh, and what I did is... I was always paranoid it would eventually break because it was so old. I kept it in the dry sink. Nice. And then, and then I only had it go about two feet or, well, no, about a foot into the tank. So it wouldn't drain off too much. Because what happened to me was I had a brand new fancy pants filter. It was one of the first uh, Fluval ones. And I hooked it up. And it the seal didn't last while i was always it always happens when you're on vacation i was on a <laughs> convention somewhere so i was gone for four days came home my house smelled like dead fish i mean it smelled like a oh, fish goodness. market and because i used to like to keep that the the intake way down low so i would get the stuff at the bottom of the tank so i had it real low i had so many africans die from that and then it flooded my whole office. I had to pull the carpet up. It was horrible. It was just, it was horrible. Yeah. Uh, I, the one time we were headed out of town, um, I think we were going to Aquashello, Orlando. Um, we got like partway through Georgia and Mrs. Fever calls me. She goes, there's water everywhere. And this thing is blown out. And it was the, the plumbing from the 90 gallon to the 100, 100 gallon that's below it. Um, something had clogged one of the drains in the back because it's got an overflow system. And I was like, just unplug it. They both got sponge filters in them as well. So they will both run just fine until I'm gone. The water levels will be a little off, but just unplug the main pump. I mean, that thing's 1,400 gallons an hour, if that's the little one. I think I've got the bigger one, which is 2,000 something gallons an hour. So that's a lot of water it was trying to kick up into a tank that was clogged. It was just going into the floor. Um, but yeah, it's always when you're going out of town. Well, I told myself I would never have another canister after that. Yeah. And then uh, I decided to buy an FX6 for my 200, and I absolutely yeah. love it. It is an amazing, amazing canister filter. They are awesome. As with most things, it's great until it doesn't work. And then once that problem comes, it's it, it can be a big one. But yeah, I've, I've got one running on, well, in, in addition to, it's on the 100 gallon on that one. 100 gallon, 90 gallon stack tank um, just for some added polishing. And I cleaned the thing out the other day. I did the maintenance on it and it sucked. It was horrible. Yeah, and I hated it. it. And I, I put it, it back together. I should um, be doing that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And I'll give that six more months before I touch on that. All right. So we're going to grab one last thing that I really want to talk a little bit about. We're going to speed through a couple of things we're not really going to talk about, but we're going to mention them. And that'll give me hopefully seven minutes to get caught up in chat and say thank yous, which is probably not going to be enough. We're going to try. So the last thing I want to talk about in terms of filtration methods that I really use uh, is going to be your sumps or your wet dry or your trickle fil tricker, tri bleh, 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 trickle filter systems. There we go. Trickle filter systems. Um, some of the great things about them, there's so much customization, especially if you build your own. You can do... Anything and everything you want in terms of compartment size, you can build in the mechanical, biological, and the chemical filtration. You can leave any of that out that you want. Um, you get the addition of filter socks, which I thought I had one in this little pile of stuff here, but I don't, which gives you some really nice filtration. Um, they have different porosity levels of the filter socks, so you can use that in place of polyfill for some polishing. You do it for your larger things, um, you know, your larger detritus and debris. So much customizing that you can do there. You can actually put your heater and everything down in the sump so it's out of your tank. You don't have to look at it. Um, they're really great. You you can build them as big or small as you need, pretty much. You know, you can get a big pump in there if you need to move a lot of water. You can do a small pump. Um, you can build them yourselves out of an old aquarium or other things as well. 
Uh, I don't recommend you doing that without understanding how a sump works and how water level adjustment works. Um, so please research that one in particular if you're thinking about doing a sump. Uh, the biggest downside is, I still give you two things. Uh, the first would be the price. They're expensive. It, it is not uncommon to spend as much or more on a sump for a saltwater tank as most people spend on their entire freshwater setup, fish and everything included. Sumps are not cheap. Um, but you can do it yourself and do them fairly cheap that way. Um, just have the knowledge of how water levels work and how the baffles and everything work. That would be my big thing. Research baffles and water level if you're looking at doing a sump. Um, but they're expensive. If you go just try and buy a new sump, they are so expensive. Mm -hmm. I've always looked and I've gone, you have any fish I could buy for that? Um, but it is what it is. Uh, and the other thing is you need the space for it. So it, they do take up a lot of room. Again, depending upon what size you go with, but typically... You do a good size sump when you when you're setting up a sump um so that would be the key things there uh they they work really really well and i absolutely love them but they could be pricey if you go and try and buy one new they can be a hassle to build if you're not really a diy type of person um also if you do a sump make sure you don't put your heater in the same compartment as your return pump make sure you have it in a compartment that's not going to get sucked dry if something happens and that return pump empties out that that system. But that's all we'll touch on with that one. Um, there are some other methods. We talk, talked a little bit about under gravel filters. Um, you've got your fluidized media filters, things like K1 media. Uh, and those are neat. Uh, K1, for me, it seems like you have to have so much fluidized media to be able to sufficiently filter a given volume of water uh, that it just hasn't been worth it for me. I've played with them a little bit. I think it's an, a really cool concept. Um, is that like a test filter? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's got it in there. Um, but if you actually crunch the numbers and you look at how much media you need to truly biologically filter each gallon of water, like the media required per gallon, it's a lot. It is a lot of media required. Um, but you know that is an option, and they are cool, and they look cool as well. Under gravel filters, you know that's that's classic old school. Um, it's one of those things I haven't used in ages i think i still have one or two that i may throw in a tank if i ever uh, set that size tank up again i think one of them i've got is for a five gallon and i don't have the five gallon set up right now um but the biggest thing i want to touch on and then i've got to get to the chat because we've got seven minutes is natural filtration uh now keep in mind i will still always run a sponge filter in my tanks um but one of the most important things you can do is to try and maintain a healthy balance, especially using live plants. Um, but whatever you use for biological filtration, you want to have whatever method you use, make sure you have the biological filtration down. That is going to be, I would honestly say your number one thing, because you can have a tank that's got adequate biological filtration and doesn't have the clearest water but still has pristine readings. It still reads safe water for the fish. Whereas on the flip side, you could have a tank that's got great mechanical filtration, but your biological is lousy. You didn't cycle your tank properly and your fish are dying off. You're like, I've got crystal clear water and my fish keep dying. Well, that's because you don't have the biological filtration in place. You don't have that natural balance. Um, but you can do a well-planted tank because um, that gives a lot of surface area over all those plants as well. But you could do a well-planted tank balanced with the proper amount of fish with the proper bio load in terms of your feeding and not even run filtration. Absolutely. I still always like having filtration just because I find that the protein buildup at the top irritates me to death when I don't have some sort of surface agitation. Um, but no matter what setup you go with, make sure you've got adequate biological filtration. And I think that's where we're going to leave off on that final thoughts from Ed before we jump into the chat and talk really, really fast to get through all of it. Nope. Let's do the questions. And if we miss All any, right. we'll talk about them in the next show. Absolutely. Let's roll on through here. Uh, Sergey Sieber was saying the little filters referring to those aqua tops uh, are great. Still got it on the scape off tank with the beta. So she got one of these from doing the scape off at Aquaticon, as did I. That's where that came from. Um, she says it's running great. I haven't got to try it out yet, but it's looking good. And I'm glad to hear good things. Thank you so much, Sarah. Matthew again says, uh, an easy carpeting low light plants, uh, or any easy carpeting low light plants. I had bought $25 worth of dwarf hair grass, uh, and it all died. 
Um, low light. I mean, my favorite carpeting is Monte Carlo, and it really doesn't require that much. It really doesn't. Um, most plants, if you've got just a standard, which I know you've got the, um, you mentioned, no, that wasn't you mentioned. I forgot what light you've got, Matthew. I feel like you've said it at one point. Um, pretty much any of the LED aquarium lights, though, and a lot of the newer fluorescents, they, they cover low to medium. They don't just cover low. And so quite a few of them cover, you know, up to high, you know, if they've got adjustment to them. But with any of your standard nowadays LED aquarium lights, I don't see any reason you couldn't do like a Monte Carlo or some things like that. Ed, what's your favorite? I know you've got a favorite you you throw out there usually. Uh, my favorite, which plant? Carpeting, carpeting plant. Uh, well, Monte Carlo is the best. Well, there you go. It's the easiest. Two votes for Monte Carlo. That's what I would go with. Uh, let's see, you're rolling through here. Matthew again said, oh, there we go. My light is 11 watts uh, for my other question. Yeah, so 11 watts. So first off, um, I would probably wait to add any more plants until you figure out how to get the plants you have healthy. Um, because what you're going to do is, uh, so let's say that I've just rescued three starving dogs. And then I go throw another starving dog in there and they all have the same amount of food to share. You're going to have all these things sharing resources that really want these nutrients. Um, so you've got plants that maybe aren't doing well. Maybe it's not enough nutrients. I don't know for sure. Um, but I really wouldn't want to throw anything else in there that's going to pull away nutrients until I've got the plants that I have in there growing successfully and looking good. Um, so honestly, just in the sense of saving you some money, I would hold off on getting any other types of plants until what you've got going on is doing well for you. That's just my personal my thoughts. I get that we want it to, we want it now. We want it pretty. I want to, the things we need all the things more cowbell right you know does he um, have the lighting the time down uh, like, i did not don't see the the time duration on there keep if you're not getting algae you i mean algae is a great way of knowing you've given it too much light yep so if you've got no allergy algae either then maybe you're not giving it enough light like enough time yeah Absolutely. Uh, that's what I was about. The duration, I don't know what it is, but maybe add an hour or two and see if that helps to get them more light. Uh, let's see. Carlos Diaz says, I had to put some carbon in my canister the other day um, after the, after discovering the canister was off for a week. I fired it up and the tank smelled like eggs. Uh, good to know uh, what it does to first. Yeah, so that is a great use. Um, if you've got something in there, like you said, you fired it up and it smelled awful. You know, carbon is great for pulling that stuff out of the water. Uh, but keep in mind, like Ed mentioned, it is going to pull a lot of your liquid first out as well. Um, so kind of adjust accordingly after the fact. Oh, you know, something else with fertilizers. I don't put the recommended amount. I give it two squirts, maybe four if it's a big tank. But for my 20 longs, I give it two squirts after water changes. I don't do it you know, weekly, if I've got a lot of plants in there, I'm going to do water changes probably every two to three weeks. That's when I'm going to give it the, the squirts also. <laughs> so that sounds gross. But, you know, the two pumps when I give it some new water. Absolutely. Blue Rhino Games saying hello. What is up, Blue Rhino? Appreciate you swinging on through here. Paul Stero says the titles have the skimmer that can clog up the works. Yeah, that is true. They have that surface skimmer that can cause some issues. Uh, and the aqua clears are great, but they don't have the pump in the tank like most of their competitors, uh, which equals noisy and less reliable. 100% right. One of the five tanks I had to check. I have certain tanks I have to check when the power goes out for certain issues. And one of them was the tank with the big aqua clear 110 on it. I had to go reprime it as soon as the power kicked back on because they don't have it in the water. 100% correct. I'm going to grab the super chats as we go through just to keep things orderly and uh, do this quickly because we're out of time, but we're not but we are. Rico Stan, thank you so much. Uh, been a member for 22 months, says, uh, these are still broken. It says 13 months now, but as soon as I post it, I'll see the real time. 24 months, question mark? Almost, almost, buddy. 22 months, and I thank you so very much for that. Stephen P. 2003, using his membership, membership super chat, says, mine says seven months. Let's see if that's accurate, and it's actually nine months on Team Snowball. Thank you so much, Stephen P. Appreciate your support as well, buddy. Rustic Nashville, Checking as well. It says Team Snowball, yeah, Team Snowball, y'all. Absolutely, Rustic. 
Thank you, the Assassin Snail. Appreciate that very much. Using your membership super chat milestone thingy there. All right, it jumped on me. Go back up, go back up as far up as I can get. And if it missed any super chats, I've got those on a separate screen, so I can get all those, which it definitely did. So I'll grab those here in just a second. Comments. Postera says, uh, I'm running that internal filter in my discus tank. Uh, it even ran the tank when the impeller on the canister crapped out. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're awesome little filters. I haven't used them a lot, but I do really like the design of them and the thought process behind them. I think they're pretty cool. We'll grab the super chats and stuff from that over there. Oh, that over there. There's one other type of filtration that we didn't even touch on whatsoever is UV light filtration. Yeah. And that's that, pretty neat. It is, but it's definitely not one you want to run all the time. Um, but it is kind of like a, a... I put it in the category with polishers. Um, though you can have some things that polish all the time. Um, I, I tend to use them on an as-needed basis. Uh, just I got a book sure. on how to do your own when I was down at the ALA and mm -hmm. you can do major big ones that will polish well I mean it basically kills everything bad in the water and these guys are using them all the time and I was and I'd never heard of it in my life and I was sitting at dinner with Corey and Dean and mm -hmm. Corey was talking about how he uses one on his turtle tank because turtles are so dirty yeah I remember you like, telling me about that that is so cool so, but we don't know much about it. We've never used them really. I mean, I use a little UV filter. To... I, I used them back on the saltwater side years ago um, okay. as needed from time to time. Okay, let's see if I get caught up. I got 20 some odd minutes of stuff to grab here. 30 minutes. Uh, Paul Stero says, I run the shark in a 20 long uh, with the sponge filters. The combo keeps the water clear. I bet it does. That sounds like an awesome combo. And that sounds kind of like the way I would utilize it in addition to something else. Lots of people showing love for the aquarium co-op sponge filters. Absolutely. Got a bunch of those, and I love them. Super chat, super chat, super chat. I'll get all y'all together here in just a second. Uh, Buddy Viper says, why is Ed using an airstone in that sponge filter? Why not just attach it to the nipple inside? Uh, I may have missed something. So, well, Ed, do you want to take that? Well, she asked you why I do it. <laughs> well, well, I could answer, but yeah. I, um, I've been waiting for this question. Okay, before. well... The idea is if you do that, the bubbles are going to be a lot bigger coming up. So it's going to be more loud because it, when it hits the surface. So little bubbles won't make as big of a lot. But little bubbles have more surface in the end that's going to pull more water up and actually pull more stuff into your filter by going yep. up. And it's kind of like uh, the state with the most uh, seashore or most beaches is uh, Wisconsin because of all their lakes, I think. Or maybe it's Minnesota. I don't know. It's one of those. And you'd think it would be one of these on the ocean, but it's just all those little circles actually add up to a lot more surface and it helps pull air up. And it's quieter. Absolutely. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I saw a huge difference when I started putting the, the air stones and the sponges, and I like it. Bunny Viper says, What's a good hang on back brand? Ed, I know you've got a recommendation. Uh, well, I like the title. There you go. Well, the title is a good one. It definitely is. Um, I have not tried this out yet, this Aqua Top that came with the tank from the, the escape thing. I like the design of it. Um, a lot of them are about the same. The title is nice, and I do like the Aqua Clears because of how much space you have in the back for hot rodding and the fact that they're kind of laid out in a way that's pretty close to how I want to hot rod it anyway. So if I was going to have to go buy one right now, it would probably either be a title or an aqua clear. Yeah, and you know what? And I also really like the really cheapy Marine Land ones. They're super yeah. cheapy and they seem to last forever. It's crazy. All all of my back in the days have been Marine Land. I uh, like all the old hang on backs. It was all Marine Land and I loved I, them. I did. I, I got a whole bunch of them for free when I was buying the the 5 gallon tanks, little bitty ones, and whenever I need to polish a tank up or something, I throw that in there with polyfill. And I absolutely love it. They're nice little filters. Definitely. Uh, so Matthew says, I do have a little bit of hair algae uh, and I run my lights for eight hours. So I wouldn't kick the lighting duration up anymore. Um, I almost wonder, I almost wonder 
if you're getting enough, so things are out of whack. You've got some hair algae. Things are, are slightly off. It's it's a nutrient imbalance um, or a lighting imbalance. So the first thing I would do is I would cut back on the fertilizer twice a week, and I would go to once a week. I would leave your lighting at eight hours. If you have the option, one thing I have done in the past is I've split my eight-hour cycle. So I'll run it for four hours, have it off two, and then run it for four more. Um, if you have something that's programmable that you could do that, that has done well for me in the past on quite a few tanks. Um, but other than that, I mean, I really feel like you've got decent lighting on it. You're giving it a good duration, enough to the point that you're getting hair algae, which is probably from the additional nutrients of that extra fertilizer because you've got tabs and you're dosing uh, liquid ferts twice a week. Uh, so I would cut back on the liquid ferts, try and get rid of that hair algae because it it sucks a lot of stuff out of there, but it doesn't tend to show up without some sort of imbalance, either from lighting, nutrients, or um, a couple other little things that are very rarely the case, um, like your mineral levels being off and weird stuff like that. So that's where I would start at. All right, rolling through here. I think I think we got all the highlighted stuff. So we're going to jump over to the Super Chats window here. Right here. We're going to say some thank yous. I appreciate y'all so very much. And thank you for being patient tonight. Um, I know I went a little long-winded with the talk, but I was really happy to talk about it because I like talking filtration. <clears throat> there we go. There's Rustic's uh, membership chat. There's Paul Sotero using his membership chat saying, it's frozen in time. He's been a member for 17 months. Thank you so much, Paul. And he's an awesome mod as well. Rustic Nashville saying, Aquaticon. He yeah. symbols and parts. He claps. It's $5 super chat. The Assassin Snail. Rustic, thank you so very much for the love and support there. Very much appreciate it. Hopefully we'll have another one next year. I hope so. And if not, if you ever get into town, give me a holler. Hopefully I'll see your message. I feel bad. Uh, TJ had messaged me like back in March and asked about uh, coming to town a couple weeks ago. And it was hidden um, because I guess we, we weren't technically friends on there or whatever. So it got hidden in the uh, help for review folder. And I'm like, I probably wouldn't have been much fun anyways because of everything that's going on with my friend of mine passing, but I still felt bad. I had to at least responded until after he had already come through town. So TJ, if you are listening and you haven't unsubscribed and left already, buddy, I appreciate you. I'm sorry. I didn't get to see you. I'll send yeah. you a message. I want to send you something a little special since I, I screwed up and I missed out on that. I got two quick things. Quick. I, we missed whip too. Uh, he was just in town and well, he was an hour North of me. So he'd be about an hour West of you. And I felt horrible. I didn't get to hang out with him. But um, my next door neighbors, it's their last weekend. And we had them over all the time playing games and stuff with them. And it was just a bummer because uh, I would have liked to have gone and seen him. That would have been cool. Absolutely. He was yeah. another one that was in my health for review that messaged me oh. back in like March. And I just replied to him earlier today. Well, and Rustic, if you ever want to go to a... Uh, Knoxville Aquarium Club. I think they're called the East Tennessee Aquarium Club. They're amazing. Uh, Mitch from Scruffy City. Mm -hmm. I think he's here. Yeah, Scruffy City Aquatics is here. The, on the 11th, they're going to have an awesome guy there talking about tubbing. So I'm really hoping I can get there because I'd love to, you know, I love tubbing. So I'd love to hear somebody else talk about tubs. Um, so if you're ever there, want to come in for one of those meetings let james and i know and we'll tell sean and maybe we can all have lunch before the meeting or after absolutely it'd be a good time it always is hanging out with fish nerds oh yeah rico stan with the five dollar super chat thank you rico says six sleek swans swim swiftly southwards i think i got that six sleek swans swim swiftly southwards yeah thank you for the tongue twister appreciate that rico and the five dollar super chat thanks for the support buddy Fish Tank Dad using his membership milestone, milestone super chat. Been a member for six months. Time sure does fly. Uh, thank you, Fish Tank Dad. He says, you guys rock. You rock, my friend. Appreciate the support from you. I really, really do. Whips World with $5 super chat. Says James, 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 James. I forgot. I'm sorry you forgot, buddy. But I appreciate the super chat. Appreciate your support, my friend. I'm sorry we didn't get to hang out. Uh, but thanks so much for that. Lilibet Tavares with $3 super sticker with that cute little fox saying, how's it going? It's going great, Lilibet. I hope you're doing well. Always a pleasure to see you on Thursdays. Thank you for being here and thank you for the support. There's our buddy, Ben Wiggles. $10 super sticker with that cute little fox with the little heart. 
Love you too, Finn. Thank you so much for that. Really does mean a lot. In here every week as well. All of you guys. All of you guys and gals, ladies and gents in here every week. Appreciate that. Only Oscars throwing that $10 out there. Said, glad to make the live show. Thank you. Very much appreciate it, Only Oscars. Always showing love and support. That means a lot to me. Thank you for that. Last but not least, and then we'll go over to Ed's show because we're burning up his time now. Killer Kitty 08 with that $2 super sticker. That cute little fox doing the number one. I love it. And I thank you, Killer Kitty. Any final thoughts, Ed, before we head on over? No. Nope. Oh, well, uh, Mitch said it's at the meeting is at four o'clock at the Blunt Mansion in Knoxville, Tennessee on the 11th. There we go. All right. We're about to head over to Ed's next. The link is in the chat for those of you watching live or catching the replay. You can still pull that out of there. And as always, thank you for being here, my friend. I really do appreciate it. All of the uh, lurkers, listeners, super chatters, contributors, questioners, commentators, of course, the moderators and the members. I appreciate you all so very, very much. And of course, the replay crew. I love you guys. Till next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Don't be afraid to catch yourself a little fish room fever. <laughs>